Good evening. Good evening. This evening we celebrate the solemnity of the Immaculate Conception. We welcome Father Dan Quinn celebrating Mass with us uh, as our priest, and we welcome the people who are praying with us at home. Number 790. communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. My sisters and brothers, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate these sacred mysteries. Lord Jesus, you call us to follow after you in your ways along your path. Lord have mercy. You provide us with the example and the assistance of the saints who have also walked this path, though, in, though imperfectly, gives us the strength and courage to follow along ourselves. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Above all, you have provided us with Mary as our mother and model of holiness. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen.
Let us pray. O God, who by the Immaculate Conception of the Blessed Virgin prepared a worthy dwelling for your Son, grant, we pray, that as you preserved her from every stain by virtue of the death of your Son, which you foresaw, so through her intercession we too may be cleansed and admitted to your presence. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Genesis. <clears throat> After the man Adam had eaten of the tree, the Lord God called to the man and asked him, Where are you? He answered, I heard you in the garden, but I was afraid because I was naked, so I hid myself. Then he asked, Who told you that you were naked? You have eaten then from the tree of which I had forbidden you to eat. The man replied, The woman who you put here with me, she gave me the fruit from the tree, so I ate it. The Lord God then asked the woman, Why did you do such a thing? The woman answered, The serpent tricked me into it. So I ate it. Then the Lord God said to the serpent, Because you have done this, you shall be banned from all the animals and from all the wild creatures. On your belly shall you crawl, and dirt shall you eat all the days of your life. I will put enmity between you and the woman, and between your offspring and hers. He will strike at your head while you strike at his heel. The man called his wife Eve because she became the mother of all living things. The word of the Lord.
reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Ephesians. Brothers and sisters, blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in Christ with every spiritual blessing in the heavens. As he chose us in him before the foundation of the world to be holy and without blemish before him. In love, he destined us for adoption to himself through Jesus Christ, in accord with the favor of his will, for the praise of the glory of his grace that he granted us in the beloved. In him, we were also chosen, destined in accord with the purpose of the one who accomplishes all things, according to the intention of his will, so that we might exist for the praise of his glory, we who first hoped in Christ. The word of the Lord. According to Luke. The angel Gabriel was sent from God to a town of Galilee called Nazareth to a virgin betrothed to a man named Joseph of the house of David, and the virgin's name was Mary. And coming to her, he said, Hail, full of grace, the Lord is with you. But she was greatly troubled at what was said, and pondered what sort of greeting this might be. Then the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. Behold, you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you shall name him Jesus. He will be great, and will be called Son of the Most High. And the Lord God will give him the throne of David, his father, and he will rule over the house of Jacob forever and of his kingdom there will be no end. But Mary said to the angel, How can this be, since I have no relations with a man? And the angel said to her in reply, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore, the child to be born will be called Holy, the Son of God. And behold, Elizabeth, your relative, has also conceived a son in her old age. And this is the sixth month for her, who is called barren. For nothing will be impossible for God. Mary said, Behold, I am the handmaid of the Lord. May it be done to me according to your word. Then the angel departed from her. The Gospel of the Lord. I'm going to, I had the children's mass this morning at the, at, with, with those, all the school kids, so you're getting the same homily that I, I had given with them. So I want a quick little poll. How many of you, when you were 
kids, or more recently, I don't know, ask your parents, where did I come from? Does anyone remember asking that of your parents? Okay. Or perhaps, where was I before I was born? Now, maybe as a, you get a, the answer uh, when, um, if you had baby, when you have, if you had baby brothers and sisters, then the answer was pretty clear. When you had a baby, brother, like, oh, yeah, I came from in there, in mommy's, in mommy's tummy. But that's um, that's all well and good. Uh, but the um, it, it can still be not a satisfying answer for for little children. More important though is not where did I come from. But maybe you asked your parents this question. Why did I come? Why, why do I exist? Not where did I come from, but why, but why did I come from there, wherever it was I came from? Uh, maybe it's a little bit older children, I don't know. Uh, or maybe you just ponder that yourself in your own sort of like thinker. Um, I think our readings today and this feast today help us to... Um, To think about that and to uh, and to give a little bit of an answer, regardless of where or how we came into existence, which have sometimes scientific answers, uh, the um, we why we exist or what our purpose is in life, and Paul gets into this too in his in his second reading there. There is a plan for us. God desires good things for us and, uh, and desires ultimately, and Paul gets into this too, ultimately heaven for us. That's why. For our own good. That's the plan. And today's feast is a bit of an anomaly when it, an anomaly when it comes to our sort of saints feast days but if we have um, if we have um, most of our saints feast days they fall on the day that someone was born or the day that somebody would die or the day that somebody was martyred or like saint ambrose yesterday it was the day that he became bishop of milan um, but we also have birthdays we have mary's birthday we have john the baptist's birthday we have christmas which is Jesus' birthday. Again, the kids this morning answered the questions. I, I didn't. Uh, uh, so it's Jesus. You know, we have these feast days that are birthdays, or at least birthdays into heaven. But um, this is not any of those. This is this is a feast about Anne and Joachim awaiting their daughter, pregnant. Uh, uh, you know, in in in, in, Anne's, in Anne's womb to be born. And uh, and only we have we have another feast day for Mary's birth. We have another day for Mary's assumption. But today is about that conception and that and that God had a plan for us. He has a plan for us each day. God has a plan for me today. God has a plan for me tomorrow. God has a plan for next year for me and for last year for me and for and and for you know ten years ago for me. There were God's plans. Whether I followed them or not, you know, we have free will. But that plan goes back to our birth, and it goes back to before our birth. The plan goes back to our conception, and that's kind of what we're celebrating today with Mary and her conception, and that we get this reading about her being willing to do it, to say, let it be done to me according to thy word. That's the, uh, I think that is our feast today. God has a plan for Mary from her conception, and Mary agrees to do it when she's old enough to be able to agree to things. When she's, you know, past age of reason, when she's old and she's, uh, you know, uh, when the angel comes to her at the appropriate time for that. But we have that free will. We just simply need to follow along where God wants to lead us. Uh, and, he, and he's had that plan for us from our very beginnings.
Let us together profess our faith. I believe in God. For the church, its leaders and people, may we heed the angel Gabriel's invitation to be without fear and accept the opportunities offered to bring Christ to the world, we pray. For political leaders everywhere, may they enact policies that support the dignity and well-being of all people. We pray. For pregnant women, especially those in difficult circumstances, may they be supported by their communities and carry their baby safely to birth. We pray. For our community, the old and the young together. May we value the gifts of each generation has to offer and receive them with open hearts. We pray. For all who are ill, especially with chronic or incurable diseases, may they discover reasons for hope in the midst of their challenges. We pray. For all who have died, including Father William Pate, may they abide in the eternal embrace of God, and may those who mourn be comforted through the faithful presence of the Christian community. We pray. For the request for prayer included in our book of intentions, may the hand of God's touch all concerned with love and peace, we pray. you now if you brought an offering to place it in the baskets at the base of the altar platform.
Pray, sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God and my God. Graciously accept the saving sacrifice which we offer you, O Lord, on the solemnity of the Immaculate Conception of the Blessed Virgin Mary, and grant that as we profess her on account of your prevenient grace to be untouched by any stain of sin, so through her intercession we may be delivered from all our faults through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is, right it is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For you preserve the most blessed Virgin Mary from all stain of original sin, so that in her, endowed with the rich fullness of your grace, you might prepare a worthy mother for your son and signify the beginning of the church, his beautiful bride without spot or wrinkle. She, the most pure virgin, was to bring forth a son, the innocent lamb, who would wipe away our for offenses. You placed her above all others to be for your people an advocate of grace and a ma model of holiness. And so, in company with the choirs of angels, we praise you and with joy we proclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We go Therefore, as
as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, and Edward, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. May the sacrament we have received, O Lord our God, heal in us the wounds of that fault from which in a singular way you preserved Blessed Mary in her immaculate conception, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Announcements? Father Pape's funeral will be on Tuesday morning, reception of the body on Monday evening, and then he'll, the casket will stay overnight in the church. Um, for anybody who is interested in going. And we're having a hot chocolate some fundraiser tomorrow at the school for the homeless in the city over at the Lesser Sacrament School. 10 o'clock until 11 o'clock. I know it's one hour, but it's a fifth grade class doing it. So it's during class. So they have, they're going to sell hot chocolate for an hour and give the donation and give the proceeds to, the, uh, to one of the homeless shelters. And there's a women's retreat on St. Pi Pius on Saturday morning. Well, on Saturday all day, 9 to 4, I believe, if you haven't heard of that already. Okay. The Lord be with you. And May Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Mass is ended. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks, Thanks God. God. Come on, peace.